Hey guys, I'm Dave Troll and welcome to the Troll Gallery. Today we're going to build a crosscut sled for that new table saw of mine. And a couple things I'd just like to mention. We're about, you know, a month and a half, two months into this lockdown thing, so we're pretty much working with the materials that we have on hand. I didn't want to go out and buy new sheet goods or any of that, so um, maybe not using the materials that I would have used, all things considered, but I think it's going to work out fine. And the other thing is, the hair's getting pretty shaggy. What can you do? Can't get a haircut. Anywho, let's go ahead and jump in and see what comes of it. I'm starting with 3 quarter inch MDO plywood for the base. I'd normally use 3 quarter or half inch Baltic birch, but this is what I had on hand. chose to make my sled 24 inches wide by 17 inches deep. I think that's just a good size for my table saw. Next, I ripped the runners to size. I'm using some leftover hard maple and cutting it to 3 quarters of an inch by 3 eighths of an inch and then checking the fit by removing more stock as needed for a snug fit. I'm using a new push stick, or at least new to me. It's based on Jay Bates's push stick, and there's a link below if you'd like to learn more. And we're looking for a snug fit, nothing too tight. Just want that to be able to glide through easily. Now I cross cut the fence pieces from 5 quarter red oak. 4 quarter would work as well, but I had this and I like the heft of the thicker stock. The front fence is 24 inches wide to match the base, and the rear fence ended up just under that. For no other reason than this is the stock that I had. Once that's done, it's back to the table saw to rip the fences down to width. The rear fence is 4 inches and the front is 6. The height isn't critical. These just seem comfortable for me. I lay out the front fence to make it easier to hold on to. I like curves and I just use a spray can to help with the layout. And for what it's worth, use a good pencil in the shop. Cheap ones will just drive you crazy or maybe that's just me. A square fence would work just as well, but I like a high center and lower hand areas. Being able to hold my stock down as I make my cuts just works for me. I use a jigsaw to cut mine out, but they can also be cut with a bandsaw or a coping saw. I sand the edges and faces smooth with my random orbit sander. I 
and then I head over to my drill press with a sanding drum installed to get the curves cleaned up. I don't have a spindle sander, but this works pretty well. I just add a secondary table to raise up my stock to ensure that the edges get smoothed out completely. After the fence is cleaned up, I head over to my router table with a quarter round bit to ease the edges. I ease the edge on both fences, well, just because. It's not necessary on the back fence, but I did it anyways. And then it's back to the random orbit sander for some final cleanup. Just so you know, I'm one of those weirdos who likes sanding. It's kind of like a zen thing for me. I went back to my runners and cross-cut them to length. Once that was done, I pre-drilled them with a countersink bit. I like using a fence on my drill press when all my holes are along a line. It just makes the registration that much faster. Going back to the base of the sled, I marked the locations for the holes to hold the rear fence in place. I made a point to keep the screws two inches away from where the blade would penetrate the sled. Spinning saw blades and screws don't get along too well. And now it's back to the drill press to again countersink those holes to mount the fence. The advantage you have with the drill press is you can set your stop so that all your holes are at the correct depth. You can do this with the hand drill as well, but this is a little bit more accurate. After all this preparation, it's finally time to start assembling our sled. First I attach the runners to the base. Since the runners are thinner than the miter gauge slot is deep, I add a few pennies to boost the runner up. The runners will sit on top of the pennies and a light bead of glue goes on each runner. Now I set my table saw fence at 12 inches so that the sled base would be centered on the base and align squarely to the runners. I double check the placement of the runners and then add some weight to hold everything in place until the glue dries. I came back the next day and pre-drilled through the holes in the runners into the sled bottom for some 8 by 3 quarter inch screws to secure them in place. Make sure that the heads are below the surface of the runners and the tips do not penetrate the working face of the base. Now it's time to add the rear fence. Its location isn't critical since you won't be using this fence to register your cuts. I simply set it in place and then clamp it down. Now you can pre-drill through the holes you previously drilled in the base up into the fence. Now we can go ahead and hold it in place with some 8 by 2 inch screws, but no glue, just in case I need to replace it later for some reason.
Despite writing myself a note to do this, I still managed to forget to include a relief cut in the bottom of my front fence. It can be a simple eighth inch by eighth inch rabbit or an eighth inch chamfer. It's just a place for the sawdust to go so it won't mess up your stock registration against the front fence. Sadly, I remembered this after my sled was complete and I couldn't bring myself to take it apart once it was square. Oops. The front fence is a little more fussy. I align the fence with the edge of the base and clamp it down on the left side. I put a little pressure on the right side and then I square the sled fence to the table saw fence and then clamp the right side down tightly. Now I can pre-drill for those 8 by 2 inch screws on each side of the fence, but only on the outside, one on the left and one on the right. Now we can go back and put a screw in in each of those holes, but again, only one on the far left and one on the far right, because there's a fair chance you'll probably need to go back and make some adjustments in your fence. It's time to make that first cut in your crosscut sled. Cut through the back fence and through the base, stopping just shy of your front fence. Once that's complete, you can use your best square to see if your fence is square to the curve in your sled. In hindsight, had I made the sled a bit wider, I could have used a framing square to check this, but yeah. Regardless, if your fence is out of square, remove one or two of the screws holding it in place, adjust your fence to the curve, and drill a new hole and fasten the fence in place. Once you're happy with the location, it's time for a test cut. Hold your stock against the fence and push your cut through. I like to move the waist and the stock aside before pulling the sled back. I think it keeps the cut cleaner. Now you can check for square on your piece. There's a little filming ever, but the cut looked really good to me. If you want to check closer, use a four or five cut test on some scrap. I used a four cut here and after each cut, turn the stock 90 degrees so that the face you just cut is against the fence. Any error in your fence being out of square will be multiplied by four. William Ning explains the five cut method in great detail in a video that I've linked below. Check my stock for square by measuring the diagonals. If all four corners are at 90 degrees, the diagonals should be exact. I was pleasantly surprised that after four cuts, my piece was off by a 64th of an inch. And that's good enough for me, because after all, I'm making furniture, not rocket ships. 
Once you're happy with the squareness of your fence, go back and add a few more screws to hold it in place. Again, keep those fasteners away from your kerf line and pre-drill with a countersink bit. Now you can go back and insert those number 8 by 2 inch screws and lock your fence in place. Finally, I added a safety block to keep my fingers safe as I complete the cut on my sled. The block is held off the table by a few pennies so it doesn't catch as I move forward, and it's held in place with only glue, no screws. I clamp the block in place and leave it to dry for several hours. I'd also like to mention that some folks like to use paste wax on their sleds so it'll slide easier, but I'm not a fan of that. That wax can transfer onto your table saw and then onto your stock later. And if you've ever tried to put finisher glue on a wax board, you know I'm not a big fan of this idea. There it is guys. Brand new table saw sled for a brand new table saw. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you'd like to follow along with our future videos, hit that subscribe button. We've got a lot to do because, let's face it, this is not the shop of my dreams. However, that shop is on its way and we'll be building that soon. So follow along to see that, see how we fit it out. Plus, there's a lot of work to do on this 1925 Florida bungalow, so we're going to have some videos on that as well. So if you'd like to see what's going on, hit that subscribe button and follow along. For now, guys, stay safe. Take care. See you soon.